Tonight on The Checkout, we ask what's the best drill to buy for your house. And I ask, why buy a power drill at all? You never know when you're going to need a drill. Actually, what you need is the hole, not the drill. In fact, the average power drill is used for less than 12 minutes in its entire lifetime. That's less than the average Russell Crowe CD. Yeah, that was uh, a, a gift. Uh, hey, can I get back to my drill report? Well, we were going to talk about a whole new category of businesses where you may not need to buy a drill at all. Well, that means I don't have to do my report. Go right ahead. Thanks. It's called Collaborative Consumption. Sorry, who actually are you? I'm Rachel Botsman. I wrote a book on this. Whatever. There's this big shift underway in consumer societies. People are moving from owning products to accessing them when they need them. Take music, for example. We used to have to have piles of CDs cluttering up our homes. But now with services like Spotify and Pandora, we can access an almost unlimited amount for little or no cost. So there's no need for this. <laughs> yeah, that was also a gift. The same goes for things like books and TV programs and films. We want to be able to watch our favourite programs when we want to, but do we really want piles of DVDs cluttering up our hey, homes? Hey, hey, I need that. Services that give us access to stuff rather than needing to own it saves money, space and resources. And it's not just digital products, it's big stuff, like cars. Oh. Garage is that way. Car share companies like GoGet, Flexcar and Green Car Share are... <laughs> Taking all the parking spots. Well, that's one way to look at it, but the fact is that each car share takes 13 vehicles off the road. That means more parking spots. What's more, the average car sharer saves more than $5,000 per year. So, replacing the car you own... Actually, it's that one. ..for access to one when you need it can make a lot of sense, especially for second cars. <sighs> Yet that was uh, a gift. Car sharing also means that you can choose different cars based on what you need them for. So instead of having to drive that every day, imagine. You could choose a Prius, a station wagon, or even a minivan. At the moment, car share companies only really cover inner city areas. So whether it's a practical option depends on where you live. But as these businesses get bigger, they'll be able to offer more convenience and choice. In London, for example, more than 4.5 million residents live within a 10-minute walking distance from a zip car, the world's largest car sharing service. Car sharing's also happening between members of the public, peer to peer. Take Jeff here. My car, Betsy, was sitting in the garage for 24 hours a day. I realised I could make some money out of her. I started with one, and now I've got four. Yeah, good on you, mate. But what's this guy doing in my driveway? Renting your car out can help cover your repayments. In some ways, collaborative consumption may seem like good old-fashioned renting. But technology makes it faster, easier and gives you more choice. Australia's got businesses that give you short-term access to clothes and accessories. And it's good quality stuff. For example, you can get a Rachel Gilbert evening dress worth more than $1,500 for only $350. You can also hire textbooks, kids' toys and maternity wear, and also... No, 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 don't go in there. And on sites like Rentoid and Openshed, you can rent anything. Take this Nintendo Wii. You could rent it for someone for the weekend and make $45. In America, there are even businesses that give you access to artworks without having to buy them. Stop that one. Really? Hmm. We're going to need a drill to fix that. Good thing I own one. 20 bucks from Kmart. I'll just go get it. But you can rent one on Rentoid for $15. He's got a point, though. Renting might be cheaper, but you've also got to factor in things like the time, the cost and the effort of getting it. Aha! Uh -huh. 
At the same time, renting means you're not locked into a device from years ago. You can hire the right tools when you need them, and you don't have the hassle of losing all the important bits, which also means you don't need this. Yeah, look, that is great, but could you put that back, please? Mm, maybe. But what if these touchy-feely businesses give you crap service? Can you really trust them? Ah, it's funny you should ask that. Just like any other business, collaborative consumption services are covered by Australian consumer law. <laughs> that was a gift. So even if the service you get is 40, you've got exactly the same consumer rights. And the businesses that work peer-to-peer -peer are based on a system of reputation. If you rent a car from a total stranger, you can easily see how others have rated him. Average? And it usually works both ways. So Jeff can easily see what other people think of the person who wants to rent out his car. With a little bit of research, it's not too hard to weed out the bad apples. Mm. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was just one thing. I mean, that, that's not accurate. Not only can everyone check everyone else's reputation, but with car share companies, if you happen to have an accident, you're covered by the business's insurance. So it shouldn't affect the driver or the renter's insurance premiums. Can I go now? Collaborative consumption may not be for everyone. Some people get into the idea more than others. But if you're interested in saving or even making money, it's now possible to own less whilst accessing more. But let's face it, there's plenty of stuff that we don't actually need. You can now make money by giving other people access to your stuff rather than just throwing it away. Although, for some things, that's still best. Yeah, thanks for sharing. <laughs>